Can you guys see what I shared? Yes. Okay. So um, we're in shared delusion. This is the sprint one review. Uh, the sprint was a three week sprint. It started on May 15th and uh, ending today. Uh, in terms of our burn down, it looks a bit scary. So our completed story points is 74 and our remaining story points is 160. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, Safin? Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. So the big item in this sprint was rewriting the API generator to use Xproto instead of the Django-based tool chain. This task is done, but hasn't been merged in because some extra steps are needed on the build and Q&A side, but it passes end-to-end -end tests. Um, the task had several dependencies, some of which I added in the course of the sprint. And some of these dependencies are also going to help with future refactoring tasks. And also some of the other refactoring tasks in the sprint. So since the API encompasses core as well as the services, we need the ability to merge multiple uh, model definitions and combine their attributes properly. We were um, we were using um, singular and plurals uh, inconsistently. Um, and so these are these are now auto computed or specified by the developer once and for all in Exploto. We extended the IR uh, to accommodate reverse links. Um, we so forward links are explicit and reverse links are completed implicitly. We collapse the core models into a single definition so that uh, core now looks even more like a service. So one big item that came up was uh, generating PL core base because the API references uh, fields in it. And while I was refactoring it, I also took up the long-standing task of renaming uh, PL core base to XOS base. And I also rewrote the synchronizer boilerplate code generator, which used the a, the ancient antiquated tool, cha tool chain uh, that we wrote several years ago uh, that used Django to now use Xcoto. So that's all cleaned up as well. The items that are not uh, done are around security and credentials. And we put these off because uh, we decided in one of the XOS calls that uh, it was we were going to focus on cleanup and um, pushing towards 3.0.1 or 3.3.1. And this was too much to include in that. And the items that are in progress, um, so a lot of the things that I described um, on the previous slide were to rid ourselves of our dependency on Django and also on a lot of old uh, antiquated code, the old tool chains. And so this 1313 was to get rid of that, to remove all reference to, references to it and delete it. Unfortunately, it turns out that there is still a user of that tool chain, namely uh, the old API, and there are still some services using that. So that this is blocked on those services uh, being ported over to gRPC and the new API. And another thing I'm, I'm about, uh, I would say, about halfway through with is recreating the model devs APIs, which again, depend on Django. And we want to generate out of Xcoto. So that's it for me. Okay, thanks, Happen. Scott? Okay, so starting at the top, we had removing uh, obsolete models and fields. So that was uh, basically cleaning up the core to get rid of whatever objects uh, we didn't want anymore and to get rid of whatever fields and existing objects. Um, didn't end up doing much renaming. I think I handed that that task off mainly to Sappen with renaming the uh, PL core base object. 
Uh, next up was eliminating dead code in the uh, the core addicts. Um, some of it was just trivially dead and, and easy to remove. Um, other parts of it kind of had to be refactored a little bit to get rid of the parts we didn't want um, and adjust other things to compensate. So we're having to spend some time maintaining the old uh, admin UI, the old um, the old API endpoints. Uh, the same sort of stuff Sappen was talking about that we have to keep those things running because we're we're just not ready to abandon them yet. Um, writing a unit test framework for the client side um, object model. So there's basically a a small mocking uh, stub in there that that pretends to be a gRPC client and allowed me to write some test cases for the client side ORM. Um, Accord 1337, this was added mid sprint. This was uh, in support of Xproto. We realized that uh, we were using in the API the old Django content types, um, and it would be convenient for us to be able to abandon that. So we, we modified the content typing system to use uh, names rather than IDs, and those uh, names were generated uh, through the generative tool chain rather than from Django. Uh, the next three items were bugs that came up. So the first one, um, I deemed that a critical bug. Um, that was an error during deletion. Um, this was happening on all of the uh, all of the objects that that were synced uh, that we were unable to delete them due to an issue with the uh, with the deletion code in the synchronizers and and model policy. So that was resolved and that was pushed to uh, the Core 3.0 branch. Uh, the other two bugs were fairly minor and quickly resolved. One of them was um, duplicate network slice objects were created during a model policy. Um, that was just a simple fix. And then editing Volt tenants uh, from Chameleon through a 500 error. That was another issue in a model policy. It was actually in vRouter's model policy, so that was fixed. Um, those two were not uh, pushed to the Core 3.0 branch because they're they're um, involved with the uh, with the data model cleanup refactoring work. Uh, so still in progress is generalizing the model policy framework to extend to services. I think I have that pretty much done, but I'm working on uh, testing and proving um, that it does provide me with what I need for the services. So the retrospective comment um, is that additional work was uh, was added during the sprint. So basically, the bug fixes and the uh, the content type ID change. You know, also ran into a bit of what what Sappen mentioned in his retrospective, which is uh, just merge efforts. Since uh, Sappen and I are collaborating so so closely on this, you know, occasionally one of us has to uh, revise a patch. Uh, based on something the other is checked in. So we've, we we were tripping over that fairly often, but I think we're, we're past that point and back to working on mostly independent sections at this point. It'll move quicker next sprint. I think that's it for me. Okay, thanks, Scott. Mateo? Uh, yes, so... Um, to make it short, we we did the design and the implementation of the new config uh, module. It comes with uh, unit test and validation. Um, we started uh, integrating the new config module with uh, the rest of the system, and this is taking a bit longer than expected. But we are, we are doing also some code cleanup while uh, while integrating the. Uh, the config module. Um, so it has uh, uh, already been, uh, we already removed the, the config module uh, wherever it was not used. Uh, we are using that in all the core models that require it in the Django settings for uh, XOS, in the URL uh, submodule for uh, XOS. And we started integrating it uh, either in the logger that is still uh, in process, but basically done. I'm just waiting for the end-to-end -end test to pass, hopefully. Uh, and we started integrating it with the synchronizer. Uh, the, the synchronizer library is 
basically done. Uh, I still need to um, to move all the synchronize or all the service synchronizer to use the new configuration. But once done the first and I feel close, the other one should be uh, way faster. And the only thing we didn't start it yet is to remove the old config model. We will have to postpone that until we finish all the others. Okay, thanks, Matteo. Uniform development environment. Um, and yeah. yeah. So the main goal of this sprint was to create a design document uh, for changes that we wanted to make to the build and development environment. Um, so uh, key aspects of that environment are replacing Gradle with Make and also um, providing a, a more lightweight uh, environment for people to develop uh, small contained parts of, of XOS. Um, so we finished collecting requirements uh, for the build environment. We had done a bunch of brainstorming as a team during uh, the release planning. Uh, so we, we finalized what we think those requirements were and uh, Zach and I, um, with input from others, drafted a, a build environment design document and that is now out there. So I, I counted that as done, even though obviously we'd still like feedback on the design and um, there's, I think, some still some room for, for adding to that design if people see things that are missing that really should be in there. So um, there is some in-progress work that I think was maybe um, not, uh, I think is maybe out of scope for this sprint because I get, it, it involves actually starting on some of the pieces of the, the design work. Um, and I think Zach maybe can, can talk to those a little bit if he's yeah. on. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Um, the, uh, some, of, some of the things um, were that uh, one of the goals was to make it so that uh, there's one, uh, one build process across multiple uh, different um, uh, development scenarios. And uh, part of that was making it so that uh, different roles could be assigned to different, um, in different environments. Um, so a front end might build the same way as a full cord pod on physical hardware, but the uh, so uh, but um, it would have maybe certain pieces of the design like the head node and the compute nodes combined. Um, so there's work being done on that. Um, some various other implementation work for um, with doing make files and other build process. And also there's a little bit of a cleanup um, to remove some dead code. Okay, thanks, Zach. Deployments and build automation. Um, is Zuka here? I think in, it is in the same uh, situation <laughs> as Andrea. The vacation or the holiday. Um, okay. Well, the this is you. Uh, actually, I know part of this work. Maybe I can talk a little bit about this. Okay, go ahead, you. Yeah, so uh, I know that Luca is working on the Jenkins script for the JCD port, and uh, he worked on the refactory of the Jenkins file and also added the option to uh, automatically reinstall the fabric at every build. Uh, this is still in progress. Um, and uh, well, the other things I know is all the QCD ports are installed with uh, automatically with installed with uh, Jenkins jobs and uh, but the, the other part seems it, it's still in progress. Progress? I'm not sure. So the retrospective comment is um, the switch provisioning it takes takes longer than expected. 
Um, okay, <laughs> that's all I know. Okay, and then there were a couple of infrastructure things that uh, Luca did. So uh, one of the things was to try to get the workflow for Jira to mirror more what Onos does. And so what you'll see is there should be more phases that a Jira ticket goes through. So it gets uh, resolved and then closed out. Um, the other thing was to create a mapping between the uh, Jira ticket number and the Garrett commit. And so there should be an association in the Jira um, story now when commits are done. So hopefully you guys are starting to see that. I think this was done only for the Cord Jira project though. So um, Larry, maybe something to bring up with the TST in terms of do we want consistency across all the, the Cord projects? Okay, uh, we'll move on. You, thank you. We'll move on to logging. Um, so I saw that there were logging stories. Do we have uh, any updates on where those are at? Um, I don't have any super recent update, but uh, I, I know that the design document was in pretty much good uh, shape and Shivani started um, some experimental implementation, but it, mm, it's like three days that I'm looking for her, but I cannot find that. Uh, I can get in touch with her on, um, on the lock and then update uh, this, uh, this slide. Okay. And then maintenance, Andy? So we, oh. uh, I'm here, can you? Sorry, I was on mute. Um, so we released uh, Dangerous Edition, Cord 3.0.0. And I guess, um, I think we talked about preparing a, a 3.0.1 release with a couple of bug fixes. Um, pretty soon uh, to pick up some of the stuff that I guess particularly Scott uh, fixed in, during the sprint. Um, there's also was another um, bug fix that uh, was causing uh, compute nodes that were brought up after the cord head node to not provision correctly and um, that was fixed. I think that's just about it. Okay, thanks, Andy. Uh, for three dot o dot one, can you make sure that that story gets into the system? I don't know if it's yes. in the backlog. Yeah, probably it's not there yet, but yeah, I'll, I'll add that. Okay, thanks. And then uh, expand QA coverage. Uh, sorry, uh, this is Charles. I have a question for Andy. Um, some people from the community uh, kind of asked about like the documentation about three. 3.0, um, like, it, well, how's the status? What's the status of your documentation? Is that also um, up to date, or is it there? Is there any uh, work that still needs to be done? There is some work that still needs to be done. Uh, so, for example, on the tutorial of how to uh, add an XOS service, which talks about example service. That wiki page is, is currently being updated now. I think that's one of the things that a lot of people have been asking for, uh, how to go through that process. And the other area that I know that there's still some stale documentation is in the um, guide for bringing up a physical pod. And Lucas. That's the most important part, right? I mean, yeah, right. This version, then, um, yeah, currently they don't really have. The, the, the documentation uh, please, uh, if you can uh, try to prioritize this in the next year, okay? So I think that um, my expectation was that Luca was going to update that documentation. Oh, okay. Um, 
but yeah, I, I guess I don't know exactly like what his his schedule is with travel. Okay, um, um, I can talk to him later. Yeah, That's I know. Fine. I know. Last week he was in a conference, and from the next week he he'd be back working in office time just from Italy. Uh, so okay, I, great. I, you'll get back to update the documentation from next week. Yeah, we can follow up this offline. We can yep. push it yeah, yeah. continue. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then we can bring this up at the planning on Monday also. So we have some uh, sprint planning. So to me, it sounds like, right, for sprint two, we need to get 3.0.1 and then make sure that we shore up the documentation. Um, I think Andy is also going to be in Menlo. So I think there's a few things to try to sync up with uh, the various uh, cord use cases also. Yeah, that all sounds good. Okay. Um, and then uh, next item, expand QA coverage. Uh, okay, so for QA, uh, what we have done in this sprint is first we uh, finished all the tests for Chameleon APIs and integrated it into all the, the Jenkins jobs we have, including the uh, so it's API sanity test and CIAB job and uh, the physical part test job. And second, we uh, integrated the VPN VSG tests, uh, functionality tests to the CIAB job we have. Uh, the working progress is, so uh, around fabric test on physical body is still working pro progress. And uh, um, there's some, some overlap here uh, with the deployment and field automation part. So uh, as I, I just said, the retrospective comment is fabric provisioning and configuration work is still in progress and it uh, just takes longer and fails at random because of random things every time. So, okay. Okay, so your dependencies are causing things to kind of to that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, on to Fabric features, Charles? Uh, okay, so the number doesn't look quite good. <laughs> anyway, um, I think the problem is that we kind of track a, a huge story, actually two huge stories um, as one. Um, so, so it's like we should probably do track the, the things more granular in the future. Anyway, the two huge stories we're working on right now, uh, the first one is dual homing. Uh, so there are actually a lot of things, uh, a lot of parts of Honest we have to touch in order to support dual homing. Uh, the first, the very first thing is that the host store need to be able to track multiple location on the host. This part is done and merged. Um, and then uh, there is another patch, uh, it's on a review, that allow us to use the config host provider to configure a host with multiple location. And the third one would be, uh, updating a lo host location provider to detect and probe uh, multi-home host. That one is still work in progress. Um, actually, there are still a lot of things to do after these three items. So I think um, before the next planning, I, I, I probably want to uh, split the dual homing story into several uh, smaller ones. Um, and then the second one, uh, ECMP group refactoring uh, is uh, the thing that Surav is working on recently. Um, the thing is that right now the um, the physical switch can only support 15 ECMP groups um, due to the hardware limitation. So we try to be very conservative about the number of ECMP groups we use. Uh, so we uh, Surav have uh, done. Um, a lot of refactoring on this to reduce the number. Um, I think most of the part is done. Uh, he, he just need more time to do testing. Um, and then finally, the bug fix. Um, I found a bug last week uh, about um, when, when we probed the uh, the host in the network. Uh, this this is probably a more honest generic uh, issue. Um, we actually use if if the MAC address is not specified in the interface, we we'll still use. Um, an IP address on the interface to prob that will cause the target host, the probed host, uh, to learn a, a wrong MAC address. But um, that that's fixed right now, so it should, shouldn't be a problem anymore. Um, 
I think there are also stor uh, stories from Jono. I think he hasn't updated this yet. I think he's still currently working on uh, the dual homing support on the um, the Quagga and the, the B router side. Um, so basically, dual Quagga, dual upstream router, and etc. So that's it from our side. Okay, and uh, Charles, I like your suggestion to uh, create uh, more granular stories. So if you can do that before the planning session on Monday, that would be great. Sure. Okay, thanks. And then eCord. No Andrea, no Mark, there's Utah. <laughs> okay, so it looks like um, there's still work on eCord. So in progress, uh, the model for uh, CO to CO transport, eLine model and synchronizer. Uh, models and synchronizers for CPE device and then model for global enterprise tenants. Um, and then the retrospective comment, meetings, business trips, and trying to fix the manifest with failing cord in the box detracted time from these tasks. Uh, moving to M chord, ping ping. Uh, for the M code for the configuration and profiles, we already moved and uh, to three down through and uh, tested in the code in the box. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the services, we haven't finished it yet. For so uh, we are still this part is still in progress. Okay, that's all. Okay, thanks, Ping Ping. And then um, shared dilution. So sprint two starts next Monday. Um, what I'll do is. I'll close out the Jira Sprint, um, probably, uh, do you guys need more time or can I close it out midday-ish today? And then we can get new stories in uh, for the Monday Sprint planning session. So the next Sprint is also three weeks. It starts next Monday, goes to 6.23. Um, and then the sprint planning session will be at two on Monday. So I will close out the uh, sprint a bit, um, probably a bit after well, one or two today, and then we can get the next one started. Um, and then the other thing is uh, we had the, the sprint planning uh, where we laid out the feature set that we were going to tackle in each sprint. If you guys can get that updated in the sprint planning, I'd like to kind of go over that, see where we're at. Um, I think some things have slipped out a little, so is that really impacting the rest of the sprints or not? Because part of it is understanding where things have slipped and whether we um, need to shuffle anything. Okay. Okay. Thanks, everyone. I think that's all we've got for today, unless anyone has any questions or comments. Nope. Uh, thanks, Yan. Thanks. Have a good weekend. Thanks, Yan. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.